Hello and welcome to the 2019 Shanghai Auto Show. Now I'm here as a guest of a company called Dong Chi and they're basically like a Chinese YouTube for cars. And we've actually got a channel with them. Look, you can see our little logo up there. So here at the show, I'm gonna be taking you around all the new latest vehicles. There's quite a lot of electric cars here. What the heck is going on with this? <laughs> Some kind of weird thing trying to steal the limelight. Anyway, let's get on with the show. This is the world premiere of the Volkswagen Terramont X, and it's basically their answer to the Audi Q8. So it's slightly bigger than a Touareg, yet it's got a sloping coupe-like back end. Inside, it's the usual big VW SUV feel. Quality generally is pretty good though when you go low down. Not so much. I like the fact it's got sporty seats with this quilting effect on it, and you've got a large infotainment screen and a digital driver's display as well. There's absolutely loads of room here in the back. I mean, look, I can really stretch out and, of course, recline the seats. It's like a limousine. And despite this cool looking sloping rear end, you still have an absolutely massive boot. Now you might be thinking that seeing as this is as big as an Audi Q8, it's probably a Q8 underneath the skin, but no, look at this. The engine's going that away rather than that away like it would do on the Q8. So essentially underneath the skin, this is just a Volkswagen Touareg. This is a V6, but it's a 2.5 litre V6 with 300 horsepower, which we don't get in the UK. You can get it with a two litre turbo, it's slightly cheaper. And with that engine, it starts from around 30,000 pounds here in China. Now you'll be able to get this car in America, but you won't be able to get it in Europe. Probably because no one would buy a Touareg. This is the Lexus LM and it's a posh MPV. So we certainly won't be getting this in Europe because we don't care about MPVs anymore. It's all about SUVs, but the Chinese do love them and they actually love these kind of cars. So it's actually based on something called the Toyota Alpha, which is already seen as VIP transport here in China. This is going to be even posher. So you're looking at around £130,000 for this car. It's a seven seater and you have two people in the front, two people in the middle row in supposedly first class seats, then three people in the back row. And being a Lexus, it's got a huge silly grill. Now, if you think that's a lot of money, well, this particular model here with the upgraded interior, which has just two seats in the back and huge TV screens, you're looking at about 170,000 pounds. And that's because of the way that cars are priced in China. This car would normally cost something like £70,000 if it was in the UK. But when you take things into China, you have to double the price because of import duties and tax. So you're looking at £140,000. And because something like this is really, really desirable, there'll be a huge waiting list for it. So if you don't want to wait for it, and Chinese people do not want to wait for stuff, you're going to have to pay a premium. That's probably about an extra £30,000. Add that all together, and that's your £170,000 which is insane when you consider that this car is powered by a 2.5 litre four-cylinder hybrid. <laughs> Absolutely no way. Anyway, what do you think about my Chinese-style squat? <laughs> I'm not very good at it, it's a bit achy. Check this out, BMW X3M. This is the first time BMW has ever given its X3 the full fat M treatment, and over there is also an X4M. I tell you what, they have definitely spruced up the interior of this X3 with some M goodness. So you've obviously got the special M switches there so you can go straight into a sporty mode. You've got M dials, there's the red starter button, there's the red flashes down here and the M gear selector. We can change the ferocity of the gear shifts. But the thing that really stands out for me are these seats. I'm not sure about the color. It's almost like baby sick, but it does create quite a bit of difference to the normal car's interior. And the seats themselves, they do grip your body very nicely and they have that classic thing that the BMW seats do where they extend for extra under thigh support. I like a bit of under thigh support, mate. There's another first with these cars. You see, the smaller M engine usually goes into the M3 first. That's how it's always been, but not anymore. It's here in this SUV, first of all. So what have you got? It's a straight six, twin turbo, three litre, pushes out 480 horsepower in normal form. This is actually the competition pack, so it's got 510 horsepower, Nord 60, just over four seconds, but it might do under that. You know what the Germans are like, they always understate their performance figures. Big an M car, these SUVs have some of the M classic styling upgrades, like these cool door mirrors, the air vents on the side of the car, bigger wheels, bigger bumpers at the front, 
and at the back. And of course, the side skirts as well. Actually, look mean. Obviously, being an M car, you've got some other mechanical upgrades as well. So, you've got bigger brakes, you've got a rated sportier, lowered suspension as well. There's a rear differential, and of course, a sports exhaust, so it sounds the part as well. Now, which one do you have, the X4 or this X3M? Comment below, let me know. This is the new BMW X7. Now, I've already driven the car, but one of the things that's still bothering me about it is that big grille. Now, apparently, they made it this big to appeal to the Chinese market. So I want to find out what the Chinese actually think about it. Do you like the grille on this car? Yes, I like What do you think of the grille on the X7? I think I particularly like the Bauma's big grille. Because we Chinese people like the big SUV, 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 the big SUV. I've no idea, but it seemed kind of positive. How do you feel about this grill? Very good. Very good. Do you think that grill is newbie or shabby? Newbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a resounding result. Four people liked the grill. I think the Chinese liked the grill, so BMW got it right. For the majority of you who don't speak Mandarin, shabby means stupid and newbie means awesome so she thought it was awesome here we have the new porsche cayenne coupe so this is actually the turbo model so it sits a little bit lower to the ground it's got bigger wheels but the car itself the coupe is slightly different than the normal cayenne in the way that it has a steeper windscreen the rear doors are different as well look at that i can't get in it <laughs> typical the rear doors are different trust me and it has a sloping tailgate hence the coupe name it's actually about two centimeters lower the roof line than the normal KN, but obviously being taken at the back, you do have less headroom in the back, but what they've done is lowered the rear seat, so you do have just enough for adults in the back there. Driving experience is gonna be largely the same as the normal KN. Being the turbo, this has the four liter twin turbo V8 with 550 horsepower. Over there is the normal KN, and that has a three liter V6 single turbo with 340 horsepower. Now here, there's two turbos on the stand. There's the normal one, and then behind me is one with a unique body package on it. So it's got that bright orange paint. It's got different surrounds for the bumpers and skirts. Also, it's got the carbon ceramic brakes on it, which are an upgrade. However, the normal car actually has unique brake discs with a special coating on them, which apparently give better performance than normal steel brakes. Another thing to note on this KN Coupe is that at standard, you get a two meter square panoramic glass roof to help make the interior feel nice and light but you can, if you want, specify a carbon fiber roof upgrade. Now, in terms of pricing, in the UK, the turbo will cost from around 100,000 pounds. But in China, you can double that. It's gonna be about 200,000 pounds. One thing I wanna show you guys is this, look. This KN Coupe has the largest pop-out wing on any SUV. Not many SUVs actually have them, only the Tesla Model X, and this is larger than that car's pop-out wing. So I finally managed to get inside the Cayenne Coupe so I can check out the back seat, see if there is enough room. I'm sitting up dead straight and yeah, look, just about okay for me. So it's fine, really. One thing I want to point out though is this, look, normally the car comes with two rear seats, but you can get this three-seater bench at no extra cost if you want the added practicality. While I'm inside here, let's just check out this panoramic glass roof, see if it really does help. So with it shut, it's not that dark actually, especially with this lighter interior trim but it really does help by opening up the roof. I think I'd stick with this. I wouldn't go for the carbon fiber. I know it does reduce the center of gravity for a bit more sporty handling, but I'd much rather have that. It's lovely. While I'm doing the whole motoring journalist thing, final thing to check, boot space. So yeah, a bit less than the normal KN, about 15% less space, but still look, there's loads. It's about 600 or so liters. Who needs more than that? A car that's drawing huge crowds here in China is this, the Mercedes GLB. It sits between the GLA and the GLC in the range, and it's quite a large car, even though it's based on an A-Class. You can think of it as like a baby GLS, and this one here is a seven-seater. Now, it's called a Concept for now, but actually, this is pretty much production ready. So the production car will go on sale in about 12 months from now, and it'll look pretty much the same. The only thing is, it won't have some of these blingy elements like the brushed aluminium here, the crazy wheels and big knobbly tires, the weird roof lights. But if you forget all that, what you're looking at is a car you can actually buy. Well, we'll be able to soon. So I've got a rare opportunity to actually sit inside this car. No one else has been allowed inside it. So space in the middle is actually pretty good. And you can, of course, slide the seats and recline them like that. Yep. Now I'm gonna put this in a position that's all right for me. 
and then see what it's like in the third row. So I just pull this and it'll give me easy access. Excuse me, <laughs> get in. Now this is a compact car and yeah, it's a bit tight for adults in the back. Look at that, it's a little bit tight, but it's doable and it's not, it's not the worst. Now in Europe, most people have this as a five seater, but the Chinese do like seven seater cars. So they will get it as standard with seven seats. Whereas it'll be an option for the Europeans. Now, one of the reasons us Europeans will go for the five seater is because we like our boot space, because in seven seater mode, you haven't got much, look at it. But obviously you can fold down the seats to create a bit more room. I quite like this material actually, but you're not going to get it on a production car. Now we've got way more of that kind of browny, leathery, suede material. It's all very concept car-y with this bright orange stitching as well. But if you forget the bling, the layout and structure of the interior is what you're going to get on the production car. Now I do hope they do this open pool wood trim. They may well do because Mercedes does this at the moment on some of its production cars. So that's nice. That might make it over. But the real shininess like on the steering wheel, you're not going to have that because you'd be driving along and it'd just be reflecting in your eyes and give you a migraine. Here we have a car that you're only going to be able to get in China. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, it's a, a saloon. Seen that already, we're getting that in Europe. Well, yes, we are, but the Chinese have a long wheelbase version, of course. And it's this car made in Beijing, no less. It's 60 millimeters longer than the saloon that we get. And as a result, yeah, the Chinese just love extra rear knee room. And there is quite a lot extra, and you really notice it. Everything else is pretty much the same. So the interior design, the engine, you've got the two litre turbo, 306 horsepower, 0 to 6 in about 4.8 seconds, all wheel drive, dual clutch, automatic gearbox, seven gears. Does it look better longer or shorter? I can't really make up my mind. Welcome to the future of transport according to Audi. So this is the AMI, although it's written A-I-M-E. Now it's an electric car, but let's say you can't be bothered to drive anymore. Under certain conditions, it can go fully autonomous. So you press a button and the steering wheel will move out of your way and the center console will move up and it'll create more like a lounge space as the car drives you to whatever destination you want to go to. Now it's powered by a 170 horsepower electric motor at the back and actually this platform that's based on is the same that underpins the Q4 e-tron and this car hints that Audi may be doing a smaller version of that car, maybe a Q2 e-tron, which will go up against the lights of the BMW i3. Sorry guys, I made a bit of a mistake. This isn't going to be a Q2 e-tron, it's more like to be an A2 e-tron. It's because the Q2 e-tron is actually over there. So here it is then, the Q2 e-tron. Now interestingly, this car has the electric motor at the front. That concept has it at the back, like will all future VW Group small electric cars. As this is a Chinese debut and a Chinese car, of course, it's not just a Q2, it's a long wheelbase Q2. I'll tell you what, a long wheelbase version of the Q2 is a great idea because one of the problems with that car is that it's a bit tight for rear legroom, but this one, absolutely fine. I think if they did this in Europe, it'd be very, very popular. The car looks cool on the outside, but I know a lot of people are put off it because it's a bit cramped in the rear, but no, not here, not in China. It's great. Finally then, the last car I'm going to show you today is this, the VW ID Rooms. So it's an electric SUV and its doors open, like sliding doors into a building, quite cool. The interior is just a four-seater, that's because it's a concept car. However, there will be a production version in 2021 and that will be a seven-seater SUV. Now it'll arrive first in China, then they'll get it in Europe, but it's probably never going to come to the poor old UK. Right, I'm having to wrap up because basically the show is shutting. In fact, the music you can hear behind me is the classic Chinese goodbye music. They're even clearing up the stand behind me. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Goodbye. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know which car you would like to see in the UK in the comments below. Click down there to watch more videos or over there on the save box to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow.